Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today, I am finally filming my favorites for 2022. I have been wanting to do this, and I've been collecting products over the last couple of weeks and just sticking them in a drawer. And so I think I have right here in front of me everything that I want to talk about today. So I am not going to ramble too much. I just want to jump straight in and share with you what I loved last year. So I have laid out all of the products and I've grouped them together. I wasn't going to, but I felt that I was being a little lazy. And I'm going to start with a few body fragrance items and then move into the makeup. So the first thing I want to talk about, and I guess I could show these together because it's the same smell. This is the Sol de Janeiro. This is their Beja Flor lotion, the body lotion. And I got the body spray. I think this came out last year, maybe the year before. I don't know, but I'm on my second no, so I had a small one of this. I used it up and I have this one and a backup of this lotion and then two of these sprays. This does remind me of Baccarat Rouge 540, but it is not the same. But I love how this smells and pairing them together makes it last longer. So sometimes I'll use it before I go to bed. Sometimes I'll use it before I go to the gym. I'm not going to the gym feeling, smelling funky. There is no reason for that but it's not an overpowering smell. You just smell fresh and clean and girly, but sophisticated, kind of sexy. It's a lot, and that's me. So yeah, these two together, beautiful smell, amazing, amazing, amazing. Since we are talking about Baccarat Rouge 540, I got this for my birthday, and I absolutely love it. This is definitely my special occasion fragrance because she's expensive, Lord, she is expensive. But it is so good and I did get the intense one so it does last a long time. I also have a dupe version of this that I got from Dossier. Absolutely love, does smell the same. So I will wear that one if I still want to smell like it but not use this like it's not a special occasion. This fragrance right here, so good. It is expensive so if you don't want to pay the price for this, the Dossier version is Ambery Saffron. Try it. Try it. You will absolutely love it. Last fragrance I have. This is the YSL. What is she called, Lord? Mon Paris Intense. I gotta have Intense because I like the smell to last. I like it to be strong. I want you to smell me. I like hearing I smell good. So this was a fairly new purchase at the end of the year, but when I smelled it, I was like, I have to have it, not even a question. It doesn't smell anything like the Baccarat, so very different fragrance categories, but this one's still soft. It's considered a floral, a fruity floral. I could see that. It says it has red berries. It says patchouli. Maybe I smell that at the end of it, kind of lingering. As long as it's not strong, I can deal with it. I don't love fragrances that are super heavy on patchouli. It smells too earthy for me. So another favorite for the year. Next, we're going to move into primers. This first one I'm going to show is a primer moisturizer hybrid. This is the Clinique Pep Start Hydro Blur Moisturizer. I have this. I am almost done with it. I don't know if you can see how much of that Probably not because my lights wash everything out, but I have put a good dent, digging my nail in it at the bottom. This kind of reminds me of the Good Molecules Primer Moisturizer, but this one I feel is a little bit thicker, so I feel like it really blurs out my pores without being overly moisturizing to where it's oily. I wear this under makeup. I wear it to the gym. This is my primer for the gym, actually. Yes, I wear makeup to the gym. We all know this. And I feel like my, my my makeup stays put. So definitely one to try if you want something that is just going to smooth everything out. Even if you're not wearing makeup, this is a great moisturizer. Next, I don't know if I would call this necessarily a primer, but I do use it under my eyes before I put on my makeup. 
This is the Tula Skincare Get It Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. I showed y'all when I hauled this that this says you can put it under makeup or over makeup. I tried it over makeup. Do not put this over your makeup. It will smear. It will make everything start moving around and start being patchy. No, I don't know why they said that. But I always put this on underneath my eyes before I put on my concealer. And when I first put it on, it feels like it has a cooling effect, which I love because sometimes I feel like I'm a little puffy. But it also gives you a glow, exactly what it says. I'm just going to show this because, yeah. Definitely gives you a glow. And I just feel like my lines aren't as noticeable because my under eye is hydrated. But at the same time, it helps everything stay put. This next product is kind of a two-in-one. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Perfector. This is their four-in-one. It says that it's a glow makeup. I got mine in the shade number two medium. This is too light for me to wear for makeup. It is another glowy product. I have this on today. I put it all over my face. You can just spot put it wherever you want to put um, like you're putting a highlighter. I put this on under my makeup, my whole face, if I want to have a glow, but I don't want to look shiny. And I'm wearing a matte foundation. This will just kind of help it still look glowy and skin-like. Another product along that line and also inexpensive is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter Glow Booster for Radiant Skin. This I got in the shade number seven, Deep. When I was looking for it, this was the only shade I could find. I should have went a shade lighter. This has coverage. Like, it's too shiny for me to wear by itself, but some people, they do, and they like it. I alternate between this one and the Maybelline one whenever I want glowy products under my makeup, kind of like a primer, but I still wear a primer too. This next primer took me completely by surprise. This is the Cali Ray So Blown Clean Blurring Primer. This says it has collagen peptides in it. I just took this out of my makeup bag so y'all know the love is real. This blurs. It helps my makeup stay put. I don't know what is in this, but I'm probably going to get another one. I've used quite a bit of this. I can't see through the packaging, but I just feel like it's getting empty, which low-key gives me anxiety because I hate running out of stuff. But this is good. Everything that you've heard about the reviews on this are absolutely true. Up next for my oily girls or boys or anyone who feels like their makeup does not last on their skin. This is the Patrick Star One Size Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. This one is also in my travel bag. This goes on. It feels like it dries down to a powder and it literally just locks everything in place. It says it's like a magnet and I feel like it definitely works. I will keep this mainly in the areas where I feel like I want to smooth stuff out, but I I will put it all over my face if I know I'm gonna need my makeup to stay on all day. Last primer I have, this is from the drugstore. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Glow Lock Illuminating Primer. I have been wearing this every time I do my makeup for the last month. This is so good. It says that it's illuminating I don't feel like it's a glowy product at all. I put it on when it dries. It doesn't feel like it's sucking the life out of you. It is long wearing, but it's not. I just, I don't know how to explain it. I feel like it, <laughs> it locks my makeup into place, but I feel like everything looks so smooth when I wear it. And I think that's the thing that surprised me the most with it because it doesn't say anything about smoothing and it says it gives you a glow. Oh, it does say smooths and refines. Okay, well, it says that on the back, but it also says that it hydrates. Next, we're gonna move into foundations. The first one that, not in any order ranking, just that I'm picking up, is this Patrick Ta for Face. This is the Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. I like this because it's a duo, so it's great to travel with. I wish they had more shades in this because I feel like this shade, I don't know, I feel like when I wore it, I felt like the shade was a little tiny bit off, maybe a tad too deep, but when I put the powder on, it helped to lighten it up. I love how this looked when I finished, especially putting the powder on top. I felt like even though this is a cream, the powder helped to keep everything from settling into my lines. Y'all know I talk about my forehead lines all the time. 
but I think that this gives great coverage. It's medium buildable coverage. I love how this looks so skin like, like it doesn't look like you have a lot of makeup on your skin just looks even beautiful, glowy, and the powder's not too mattifying. It's more just to help everything set. So I love this duo together and especially another great item to travel with because it's a two in one. Another foundation for you, this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This one is in the shade 4R64. I love how this looks on my skin. It wears well. This is such a pretty foundation and I feel like it looks like skin, but it also smooths everything out and makes you look flawless. So great foundation to try. I got a few foundations, so I'm gonna try to talk fast. I feel like I'm giving y'all too much of a rundown, but this is stuff I love, so Barbara's gonna ramble. Up next, I did do a review of this, I believe. This is the Givenchy, Givenchy, I do that every time I say this name, the Prism Libre Skin Caring Matte Foundation. This one I got in the shade 6N405. This is probably the best foundation shade match I have found this year. And y'all know my struggle. This one I feel like is my exact shade. When I try to shade match at Sephora, this is my reference. It is matte, so I do like to wear something glowy underneath this, but again, stays put, looks flawless. That is gonna be the theme for all of my foundations. This next product, I feel like the name of it does not describe what it is at all. This is the One Size Turn Up The Base BBB Cream, their Beauty Blur Balm. First of all, this is not like a BB cream. This is a full-fledged foundation. Don't let the name fool you. This is full coverage. This is stay on all day. This is matte matte. Like, you don't want no pores? You want to look flawless? You need to try this out. This next product has had me in a chokehold. This is the Black Opal True Color Skin Perfecting Stick Foundation. Why y'all ain't told me about this? I know this is not a new product, but walking through the drugstore, I was like, and eh, let me just see, kind of like in some stick foundations, especially on days when I'm going to the gym and I just want something quick and easy. I got mine in the shade Nutmeg. Really good shade match. I can spot put this where I want and blend it out and I don't need to put anything else to make the color balance. This smooths my skin so well. This is so beautiful and I want more. Last foundation on the list is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. This came out this year. I got mine in the shade 450 Medium Deep Warm. This is so good. Another product that looks skin like, gives you great coverage and stays put. Now we're gonna move on to concealers. I don't have a lot, I'm surprised. There are three concealers that have been upstairs with me that I pretty much rotate every now and then I'll throw something else in because like I said trying to use different products but yeah the first one elf 16 hour camo concealer this is not new anybody who has tried this knows how great it is this is in the shade deep chestnut this shade is weird I have this shade and then I have cinnamon so cinnamon I can use on my face to spot and blend out and it looks good this one is a little bit lighter than my skin tone. So when I wanna hide my under eyes, I will put my blurring balm on, which is kind of wet. And then this, which dries down matte and it stays put. Next, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. This has been upstairs with me. I love this. It is not too brightening, so I can wear it for my everyday makeup. I could probably still wear it if I was doing a full glam, but I usually tend to go a little lighter. This one is a little too light to wear if I'm not doing makeup, but if I just like use the tiniest little bit and blend it out and then put a skin tone powder on top of it, it looks so good. This is magic. This next product is another product that I bought this year. This is the Rare Beauty Concealer. I don't know what the exact name of this is. Instant Touch, I believe, or something. Instant Retouch. Um, but this is in the shade 420N. This shade is perfect for want to go a little natural looking and not have anything crazy. 
not too brightening or if I want to put on a lot of it and let it dry down a little bit before I blend it out to keep the coverage it can be really brightening so I like that I have some versatility with it great coverage upstairs in my vanity so had to be in my favorites up next I have a color correcting stick because I have gotten back into color correcting mainly because it helps me use less product I got this from the CCS. This is the Smashbox Color Correcting Stick CCS Cosmetics Company Store. And this one says, look less tired, dark. That is exactly why I got it. I put this in my makeup bag. I don't like that you have to sharpen it, but it is basically an orange corrector in a pencil form. So if you don't want to have an orange concealer, I feel like this is a lot easier to just kind of dab and spot where you need it. You could do it with a concealer too, but I like that this is a drier formula. When I go to just pat it in, I don't feel like the coverage disappears from it. And this has been in my makeup bag. So yeah, this is another one I had to tell y'all about. All right, so now we're moving into cheek products and I'm going to try to keep them separate, but they're kind of going to be together. It is what it is. We will start off with bronzers. I think I've had this bronzer for over a year and for whatever reason, I just decided to try it this year. This is the Minted Cosmetics Bronzer in Yacht Life. Love this bronzer. The shade of this works as a bronzer, but it's a little on the red side. So I like wearing this when I kind of want to have like a bronzer slash blush combo. It's brown, but it has a little red, which is a very natural looking blush bronzer contour shade to wear when you're not wearing a lot of makeup and you're not worried about chiseling out your cheekbones or anything like that. So this one's in my makeup bag because it looks great in my crease when I want to use my bronzer, but also just as a quick throw on, warm up my face and go. Up next, ooh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> I'm excited about all these, but I'm excited about this one because... This low key, I don't know, wait, okay, let me tell you what it is. So this is the Colored Rain Bronzer. This is in the shade Naughty Spice. I love this. She was upstairs on the vanity, and if I can open her, this one, I'll show you the comparison. I hope you'll be able to see the difference. Yes, I feel like you can. This one is a little more cool toned and this one works really well as a contour bronzer. I don't wear this one as a blush. This is definitely a bronzer. Maybe it's a little deeper, so that's why this looks a little more golden. I also feel like this one has a little tiny bit of a sheen in it. This one does not. She is matte matte, but this one I can take on a smaller brush and contour with. And I just love the shade of this. The next product that I have... I wore a lot this summer and it was still in the box because I haven't done a video with it, but she needs to come out of the box. This is the NARS Summer Unrated Blush and Bronzer Duo. Dominate is the blush and Cypress is the bronzer. Now, because of the shade of this bronzer, she is very warm red. I feel like I can wear this as a blush by itself the same way I can with the minted one. It's not chiseling anything. So this is not a contour. There is no mistake about that. But this blush, very shimmery, very pretty. These two together look so good. I pretty much just layer them and I absolutely love how it looks and the color pops. It lasts. It doesn't fade throughout the day. Y'all, none of my makeup fades. I know a lot of people have issues with that. I don't ever have that problem. And I don't know if it's just because I pack on blush and bronzer. I do. But don't have that issue so this is another great combo this next product was also something that i was pleasantly surprised about how easy it was to fall in love with this is the fashion fair lush blush duo this is their duo blush intense in the shade chocolate chip i think i used this in a video i'm not sure she is a little bit messy this is a cream blush and then also it says this is a blush, but again, another one of those shades that can do double duty. I wear this as a bronzer. I also wear it as a blush. Orange blushes look so good on darker complexions, and sometimes they can be a little scary. So I love that this is a cream formula because you can build it up or you can just kind of wear it sheer, but then you can also put this on top. 
You can put it underneath however you want to wear it. So love this combo, especially the color combination. This I picked up this year, I know, and I was so excited to find it. This is the Kaja Whipped Dream. This is their, I believe this was marketed as an eye and cheek duo. Um, this is in the shade Mocha Tart. Y'all know how I am about bronzy blush shades. That is my thing. Absolutely love it. This does not say you can wear it on your lips, but if you want a monochromatic look where everything matches and just is seamless. But I just love the shade of this, and I know it's probably kind of hard to see, so I'll just give y'all a little swatch. We ain't swatching everything, but I just think this is so pretty. Low-key kind of reminds me of what I have on my lips right now. This is just, I feel like it's a very flattering shade. I put this directly on my face, and then I blend it out. Another blush I have to talk about. This is the Melt Cosmetics Cream Blush Light. This one is in the shade Daydreamer. I got this one on their website. This is kind of like a berry bronze shade, but again, we're seeing a theme here. All of my shades that I love kind of look like this. This one does have a little bit of a golden sheen to it. I don't wear it as a bronzer. This is strictly a blush for me, but it's a cream. So it just gives you this beautiful glow. Another blush I had in a haul, and I know when I opened it and swatched it, I reacted to it just like I want to right now. This is the Milani Rose Powder Blush in Spice Rose. I found this at a Marshalls, so I don't know if you can still get this in other drugstores or even on their website anymore. But look at the shade. This looks like I'm sunburnt, but it's glowy. It looks healthy. It looks radiant. It is just so pretty. This is just the perfect flattering flush of color shade. And the sheen to it just again makes you look radiant, healthy, plump, alive, young, youthful, all that good stuff. So if you can find these, please pick it up because it is so worth it. The last one, I feel like nobody talks about these anymore. I didn't hear about it in anybody's favorites and I'm kind of confused why. This is the One Size Cheek Clapper 3D Blush Trio. Of course, y'all know which one I was gonna pick right. That bronzy shade that I love, terracotta warm. This is in Rich Betch and it has a cream blush. It has a powder blush and then it also has the matte blush pow powder and then like a kind of, it's not shimmery, but it definitely has a sheen to it. So yeah, I just feel like with this one, it is very, very, how do I explain it? I love that it's a three in one, great to travel with. You wanna wear the cream, you got that at the top. You wanna wear a matte, you got that in the middle. You wanna wear something with, to give you a little glow, you got that too, but you can also put all of these together. Next, we're going to move into, well, I'm going to talk about this last one because I'm going to just do it because it's right here. This is the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. I'm including this one right now because there's a blush in it. Oh, Lord, she is dirty. This has been in my travel bag. This has, <laughs> y'all, she has gotten some use. She is dirty. Um, this has a cream blush a powder highlight, and then these eyeshadow shades. How could you not put this in your travel bag? It's Natasha Denona, so you know the formula is amazing. This is in the deep one. There's also a light version. I love products that are versatile, and this is perfect for someone who travels. Or if you want to try Natasha Denona's products, and you don't want to buy an eyeshadow palette and cheek products, you get them both right here. So definitely worth the money and all the hype. Next, we're gonna move into face powders. So let me make sure I have these together. This first one is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Powder Foundation. This one is in the shade 365 Copper. This one is too dark for me, but when I feel like my foundation is a little too golden, a little too neutral, I will very lightly dust this on top of it and it helps to even everything out. I have not worn this by itself because it is too dark, so I can't speak necessarily for how it wears as a powder foundation on its own. I just use this to set my face, but I love everything looks smooth. It helps to lock everything into place because it is the infallible line. 
and I just think it's a great option and it's from the drugstore so it's definitely worth trying. Another powder that I found this year that I feel like had to be mentioned in my favorites, this is the Fashion Fair Warm Sunrise Set It Loose Powder. I like this because it is a yellow powder but it's not stark yellow. I tend to lean more towards liking translucent, semi kind of beige. I like this one because it does have a little bit of yellow to it, but it's not overpowering. Smooths everything out, helps everything set, helps my concealer not crease, and super flattering on the skin. So definitely worth trying. This next powder came out of my travel bag. This is the Say Beauty Air Set Radiant Loose Setting Powder in Translucent Medium. This one is a little bit dark, so when I put it under my eyes, I either put it over a concealer that is too light or I will just use a brush and lightly sweep it on. The shade of this, like I said, I tend to go more towards that kind of neutral versus a yellow. I think this is perfect. Another setting powder that I tried and absolutely fell in love with, this is their translucent setting powder, triple fix translucent setting powder. And this is in the Resilience Translucent shade. This is perfect, absolutely perfect. I love this so much. I just feel like you take a very little bit, like you can tell, I can tell, just that little bit I put helped brighten up in the center of my face. I feel like it just helps everything look so smooth. It is not glowy, it is very matte, but it just makes everything just look airbrushed and I don't even know. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know what is in this, but I feel like it is magic and I had to include it in my favorites. Two more setting powders. This had to be included because this, listen, we all know Patrick Star is glam glam, full face, all day, smooth, matte. So, I mean, could I not include this? This is his setting powder. I picked it up in the shade Translucent. This also does come in other shades. So if you don't want the white one, you can get it. I think there's a banana and then there's also a darker one if you wanna use it to set your face. The combination of his primer, the BB cream, and this, overall his products are so good for making sure that everything just stays flawless all day. So I had to include this one. This last powder, I feel like it's kind of a hybrid. I've had this in my collection for a while. I'm not even sure if they make this anymore. I probably should have checked, but this has been upstairs on my vanity, so I had to. This is the NARS Light Reflecting Setter Setting Powder in the shade Sunstone. I like using this one for if I have a day where I kind of want to wear makeup and look like my face looks semi-flawless, but not overly done. If I have a concealer that is too light, but I wanna wear it and I wanna tone it down, I will use this. I will also use this on the areas between my highlight and my blush or my bronzer because it is almost my skin tone, but it's a little more golden. So I feel like it's that perfect in-between shade to help blend everything together. I mainly love using this on this part of my face because it does have a sheen to it, but it doesn't emphasize my pores which is very hard, I feel like, to find. So now moving into highlighters, since we got there by the way of that, my other LYS product. This is the Aim High Pressed Highlighter in Brave. I remember when I first tried this on, when I first opened it, I was like, y'all, this is so glittery and so chunky, and I don't think I'm gonna like this. I don't see how this is gonna work for me. It is, first of all, blinding. One of my favorite all-time blinding highlighters if I wanna just be, look at them cheekbones, but it's not glittery. I don't know how they make it look all glittery like this in the pan, and then it doesn't look like that on your face, but it is so good. You have to try this formula. It is an inexpensive black-owned brand at Sephora. So worth the money. This next highlighter is new to my collection this year, and this is one that I had to include because again, versatility. This is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette in 002 Glitz. I love this one because there are four shades in it. 
So this one is the main shade that I wear. I absolutely love to wear this one by itself or this one more kind of like a blush topper since it's like a rose gold. But when I want a blinding highlight, I will lightly top it off with this and it just looks so good. I love that you have all the shades in here. This stays going in and out of stock. So I'm here to tell you it's worth it and I see why and I'm so glad I picked it up. All right, so we've gotten pretty deep into this video and I didn't say anything at the beginning because I love to see who really watches the whole video. So surprise, we have a little giveaway that I am doing in this video. We're talking about favorites, we're talking about you know finishing out the year and I thought why not give back to you guys? Y'all have been so great. You comment on my videos, you like them, our family is growing and this is my way to say thank you for an amazing year and cheers to even better in 2023. So I have a few products that I just randomly pulled from my drawer that I decided to give away to one lucky person who has watched this video. So the first one is this Clarity Cosmetics Press Single Eyeshadow. This is in the shade Bloodlust. This is a very gorgeous red. I think I ended up buying two of them and that's why I put one in the giveaway. I have a thing for red eyeshadow. You gotta be careful with it. And I think a lot of people are scared to try it. So I felt why not put this in a giveaway if you've ever wanted to try it. Here you go, here's a single for you to try out and you can mix it with any other eyeshadow palette you have. The next item is this little bitty cute Laneige sleeping lip mask. This is one of my favorite lip masks to wear and I bought a little gift set that had a few of these mini size ones to try. So I thought this would be great to put in the giveaway so one lucky person will get this. Next I have this Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. Y'all hear me talk about bronzer all the time. This is in their matte shade. I do feel like if I remember correctly this might be a little too light to wear for my skin tone but I think it can wear, you can wear it as a powder. I don't want to open it. This is for whoever wins it. If you're a lighter complexion, you can wear it as a bronzer. If you're my complexion or a little deeper, you can wear it as a powder. Would it be a giveaway from me if it didn't include an eyeshadow palette? No. This is the Natasha Denona Ayana palette. I have this upstairs on my vanity. I absolutely love it. It is a favorite of mine. I don't think I included it in this video because I've included it in other videos, but this is what it looks like. Brand new, not gonna touch it or open it. Love the shades in here. So I felt like now's the time to share it with someone else. And last but not least, I have this cute little Mac bag. I love this. I have another one in, in my collection. So I figured I could share. I love this one because it opens on both sides, but the sides are different. So whatever you put on this side is going to be completely different from what you put on this side. So thought that was really cute and figured somebody would love it. So in order to win, very easy, you have to be subscribed, you have to like this video and comment below and let me know what is one of your favorite products from 2023. Also, let me know how to contact you because if you don't, I can't, but I'm going to leave this video up for a week and then I'm going to pick a winner. So we'll get back to the video now, but I hope you've been watching because these can be yours. All right, next we're going to move to eye products. This, <laughs> there's a few, there's quite a few. Four eyeshadow base, colored rain paint base in the shade Rope. This reminds me a little bit of the Anastasia Beverly Hills, except it does not dry down and it's not as finicky to work with. This is light. She will cancel out everything and just give you a matte canvas to work with. But like I said, you have a little more wiggle room to play with it. It's not gonna be patchy. It's just, it's good. And I had this for a while, but for whatever reason, Probably just ease, I stick to concealer, but when I wanna do a more glam look or something that's gonna make my eyes pop, upstairs in my vanity, have to have it. Next, we're gonna talk about eyeshadows. We all know I love eyeshadow. It's my favorite makeup thing. Will probably always be my favorite makeup thing. 
I try not to pull too many palettes, but there are some that I just remember my initial impression impression was, oh my God, this has to be my favorite. So that's what's in this video. Number one, this is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. I have played with this, but I've stayed in the neutral shades. And today I just decided to go a different route and see how glam I could make it. This is the Huda Beauty Khaki Haze Eyeshadow Palette. I tried to talk myself out of buying this when it first came out because of course I don't need it. I don't need any eyeshadows, but it says khaki and I was like, okay, there's one green and this kind of shade is cute, but all the rest of these shades, why? But I just feel like this looks so good and I'm trying to show you from back here because I feel like the color shows best. This shade right here is almost, it's a duochrome, which I don't think I realized when I first bought it like i wasn't even checking for that shade but that is what i have on the inner part of my lid right now this shade right here actually gets pretty dark that's what's on my outer v and then i just kind of played between these shades right here for what is in my crease and then i also added this shade on my lid as well to help blend i did have to use this shade sorry this shade and spray my brush to be able to get the line to define for my cut crease i didn't use only i used the fenty primer just because it's upstairs but i didn't use any other kind of light shadow base for it i just put this on and i wet my brush and that's how i got this super shiny gorgeous look love the versatility of it y'all see my eyes she's beautiful Another palette that I told myself I had to have, I bought it on Mercari and then it came back. I recently talked about this. Yeah, this is in my palettes that I bought in 2022. This is the NARS Climax Eyeshadow Palette. I felt like I had to have this because this is literally fall in a palette for me. And of course there's a green, but I love all of these shades. This brown can get pretty deep. So if you want to make it a smokier look, you can. But again, there's a light cream shade. I had to have it. Formula's amazing. One of my favorite eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I will dare to say it. This next palette, y'all, when I saw the previews for it, I was like, I had to have it. I had to have it. This is the Uoma Beauty Black Magic Freedom Palette. Oh, uh, oh, be careful, girl. This is so good so good you see the top shades there are a couple kind of shifty shades i don't know if they're marketed as a duochrome but y'all already know love i love that they have these very basic matte shades because that is what you need to go with the shifty shades up here if you want to have a complete look this is so good I kind of want to put it in my travel bag, to be honest, because of the versatility of it. And it gives me the option to have the shifty shades with me. It's probably going upstairs. This green, this is coming off gold, but it's like a, so hard to explain, but these colors are just, I feel like you can see, yeah, you can see a lot more of the shiftiness when I put it like this, because you can see it at the top. It's just good. Blue to green. Can y'all see? Oh, I feel like you can. So good, so good. This next palette, I did a review on my channel. Y'all saw how much I fell in love with it when I did it. This is the Adept Cosmetics and Heather Austin collaboration. This was one of the first palettes that I got from the brand. Y'all know what drew me in besides the multi-chromes. I do feel like this is low-key kind of giving me the subculture vibes, which I think I said in my video, but I just, I love these shades. I will say, I love that the formula is easy to work with. This shade right here was probably one of my favorites. It's soft, almost like it's a cream, but it's not. I don't know. This one's one of the more flaky shades, but just, I feel like, I don't know. Y'all know I gravitate towards shades like this and then this and this to just the whole color story, everything about it. Love the formula. I love that this was my introduction to the brand because it just... It definitely made me want to try more. Two more eyeshadow palettes. This one, Ace Beauté Tropical Vibes. Oh, what this does to me. It is so, so good. 
I don't necessarily feel like this is an everyday eyeshadow palette, but again, depends on the person, depends on what you love. <sighs> this color story, like I love how they have these super bright neon shades, but then everything else is kind of more muted grungy. And then I love these freaking shimmers are so good. This palette is everything. If you love greens, this palette is everything. You have to have it. I had to include this palette because I got to personally pick out every single shade in it. So it has to be a favorite because I picked it. This is the Lethal Cosmetics Build Your Own Palette. And these are the shades that I picked. These colors are so pigmented. I got a highlighter, a blush, and then this is also a blush, but it's that bronzer kind of red blush. And then this is supposed to be a bronzer, but she's deep and cool toned and can work as a contour too. I tried to pick shades because this was expensive that I felt like I could get the most use out of and the most versatility. And I just felt like those definitely do it for face and eyes. And then I have five mattes and then I can't count seven, all multi-chromes. Had to do it. I'm not buying a regular, <laughs> not buying a regular shimmer shade if I'm customizing a palette. So I picked shades that I felt like would best complement the multi-chromes. Multi and this is just worth every penny because it was everything that I wanted. Last eyeshadow palette, y'all saw that this palette literally brought me to tears. And it's still in the box because that's how I like to save my stuff. This is the Danessa Myricks Lightworks for Transcendence palette. Oh, my paper fell out. Brought me to tears. Like literally go watch my review. This is such a gorgeous, love the formula, love that there are different formulas in it. So I feel like you get to try a lot of different things from the brand in one. This was worth the money. Absolutely worth the money. Would not hesitate. I would honestly pay full price for this. I can't believe I said that. I would. That is how good it is. You definitely have to pair it with another palette to have a complete look for a bronzer. Not a bronzer, but a transition shade. And also if you wanted to smoke it out with a deeper black or something like that. But... So worth it. I still haven't played with these. Honestly, I probably won't. But everything else in here, so, so good. Mascaras. I have two. This is always going to be in a favorites. I'm never going to stop talking about it. I have not found anything else. I did order the new Milani tubing mascara, which I heard is supposed to be a dupe, but I haven't tried it yet. So I will let y'all know. I'll probably try to do a video where I demonstrate them together. This is still my all-time favorite mascara. Tubing, it's not going to smear all over your face. Lengthens, blackens, just everything so good. This is always on my bottom lash line. Always. This is not a tubing mascara, I don't think. But it quickly became one of my favorites. This is the Lawless One and Done Mascara. When I put a mascara on, first swipe, I want it to look like, that girl just put some falsies on? What just happened? This does it for me. It reminds me of my Pat McGrath Dark Star, which I know is one of my favorites. My Fenty, oh, I forgot the name of it, but the Fenty Mascara, there's only one. This is right up there with those. I've mentioned those in favorites before. This one, amazing. Eyeliners, I have three. I've talked about this. Anytime I do a favorites, I'm gonna talk about this because it has been a favorite forever. This is the Physician's Formula Eye Booster in Waterproof. Brush tip, ultra fine, does not smear. I can get a super um, sharp line with this or I can just put it on my lash line. I also like that this is marketed as a lash booster. I don't really know if that's the case or not because I also use my Grande Lash. So something's helping my eyelashes, but this is in my makeup bag. No brainer for me. These two are upstairs on my vanity. So I'm mentioning them together because I have a brown and a black. This is the tardiest, what do they call these? Double take eyeliner, brown and black. The liquid liners, really, really good. It is a felt tip if you don't like a brush tip, which I did not think I was gonna like, but it's easy. I don't feel like it draws my lines too thick or anything like that. And this brown is dark enough. Y'all know how I always fuss about getting a brown 
that looks brown, this is it. This and the House Labs are the only two that I found that do that. These, what sucks about these is they also have a pencil liner on the other side, but this dried up before I ever even used it. Both of them. So kind of sucks. I don't know how long I had them, so that might be my fault. Lashes real quick. I have two brands. House of Lashes and Sephora. This is in the style Marigold, and I'm pretty sure I have this in here upside down, so you're not gonna be able to see it, so I'll just take it out real quick. I love these. These are very wispy. This is a bit dramatic for me, but they're not hard to put on, which is why I love them. I feel like when I've gotten the ones that have the black band, I have a lot of trouble putting them on. That's not the case with this one, and that's why I fell in love with it, because yeah, I have trouble putting on lashes, so if it's easy, I need to let y'all know about it. Second, drugstore. This is the Kiss brand. Absolutely love. Two of my favorites, Jubilee and Pompadour. Pompadour is like my perfect, wispy, kind of dramatic, but easy to put on. Jubilee is a little more dra dramatic. These are in the Faux Mink collection. This is just their So Wispy collection. So you can see... Somebody likes a certain style of lash. I like it to kind of flare out and look fluffier on the end. Tapered kind of cat eye look. Both of these are good, easy to put on, must haves. And I think I have two boxes of each of these in my collection. Lash glue, I have two. This one, um, probably, this is probably gonna be the only lash glue that I buy from now on. This is the House of Lashes Lash Glue. I got this from Sephora. I finally figured out what I've been doing wrong all these years for my lashes, and now my lashes go on easy and they stay. This one I feel holds, but it's clear, so it's not gonna mess up my makeup. And I don't know what it is about it, but I just, I don't have any eye irritation from it. It's just good. I have this in clear and in black. Drugstore option, Duo Lash Glue. This is actually the Line It Lash It line. So this is not just the one that's in the tube. So you can actually line your eyelid with this, like if you were putting on eyeliner, and then stick your lashes to it. This is really good. I always, 90% of the time, I have on black for my liner just because I like to wear a wing line. And I like that this one can be applied super, super thin if you're trying to wear a lash that you don't want to look too crazy and you just want it to look natural and darken your lash line. But it also holds very, very well, so had to include it. Last but not least, I know this video is long. Comment and let me know if you're still here because we're going to talk about lip products. I'm going to try to be better about telling you guys what I have on my lips because I feel like... In a lot of my videos lately, y'all have been asking about my lip combos, and I don't know, I just be throwing stuff on. Today, I am wearing, where is it at? Because it is included in my favorites. This is the NYX Slide On, Glide On, Stay On, and definitely a Turn On lip liner. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this in a favorites before. This is in the shade, where are we at? Urban Cafe. It is a brown, but it's not too, too dark. Easy. I hate that you have to sharpen it. It needs to be sharpened right now, but this is what I have on my lips right now. And it's just, when I want no brainer, I can go nude, I can go pink, I can go red, I can go dark. This fits the bill for all of them. Another liner, shade, and just the brand in general, I have at least two at least two shades that I tend to gravitate and go back and forth with. This is the Juvia's Place Luxe Liner. This is in the shade Brownie. I also have, I believe it's called Coda. It starts with a K. I love these lip liners. They are retractable, so I don't have to worry about sharpening them. Absolutely love that type of liner because it's less that I have to worry about and easy to keep in my makeup bag. Another brand that I love, Milani's Understatement Lip Liner. I have, what's the name of it? There's a brown one. I think it, it has the name Coffee in it. I'm not sure. This is in Saucy Toffee. So when I want to put just something to outline my lips or help with making it more of one uniform color, this is the shade that I go through go to. 
it is not a very dark liner. So when I put it on, it almost looks like it's just the shade of my natural outline of my lips. And then I'll put on a gloss with it and go. So this is just every day. I don't want to wear lipstick, but I want to even out my lips. One more liner, one more lip liner. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in Rich Brown. This super dark brown, I feel looks so flattering with a light nude lip. These are both very creamy, super, super dark, almost the same shade. So you can pick either one. These are the two. This is Huda. Huda's creamier than Makeup by Mario. Huda is retractable. Makeup by Mario is not. So if you have a preference on those, then these are two options that you can get the same shade that basically, but the formula is different. If you want something that's going to stay put, the matte ones normally tend to stay better, but I love this Huda Beauty one. This one was in my makeup bag. As far as my lip colors go, there are three. Y'all saw when I fell in love with the Makeup by Mario lip what do you call these? Lip suede, Ultra Suede Cozy Lip Cream. I have two of them. I have Naked Spice and Toasty. Kind of similar. One's a little more pink. One's a little more brown. But I love the formula of these. They do dry down a little bit. So they have good staying powder. Power. But they are not going to dry out your lips. Huda Beauty. This is the Demi Matte. So her mattes. Oh my God, those things are so drying. I found this, this one is in the shade She-E-O and it is the perfect blend of a matte, but not. Like it's still, it's a demi matte, so it stays, but it's not drying down. It's still gonna be not glossy. I don't feel like it's glossy. I don't know how to explain it. It's a liquid lipstick that does not dry down super matte, which is why I love it. Love this shade too. So I will pair this one with that lighter Milani shade. I can also pair it with a dark liner, but absolutely gorgeous, amazing formula. This last one I picked up from a cosmetics company store and the color is what got me. I didn't even know I was gonna love the formula as much as I do. This is the MAC Love Me Liquid Lip Color. This one is in the shade Baited Breath. I also have this in the shade Coffee and Sigs. I love that shade. It's like a reddish brown deep shade, but this one was upstairs on my vanity, so I had to include it kind of deeper, but it's still, I feel like this is kind of like a nude for me. This is what the kind of shades that I wear a lot. This dries down, but it's not gonna dry your lips out. That is the formula that I'm going to gravitate towards every single time. So if I want a darker shade on my lips, this is it. If I want a lighter shade, it's normally this. The combo that I have on my lips, I told y'all earlier, it's the NYX Lip Liner. The shade I have on my lips is by Juvia's Place. This is in Kebi, Kibi. I'm not sure. It is a cool toned, kind of pinkish nude shade, which I thought looked great with what's going on on my eyelids. Love this formula. It feels so luxurious and it's a matte, but it's not a dry down matte. So I actually had it on by itself, but lately I've been loving playing up my lips and wearing a gloss and this Patrick Ta, I don't know the name of it, but the Patrick Ta gloss, this is in the shade 2CC's. This is what I have on my lips today. So this is the combo that I'm wearing. If anyone asks, drugstore and high end, together. Last, we are going to talk about a few glosses and then I am done. This is the Lawless Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Lip Gloss. It does all of that. I could actually put this one on. This one is in the shade Velvet. I feel like it goes with this lip color. It's not going to take away from it, but I just feel like this doesn't have that tingly plump like the Patrick Ta does but look at the shine that it puts on my lips and i do feel like i don't know how it does it but i feel like it makes my lines look smoother and just makes my lips look fuller so i have backups of this that is how much i love it lip oils i will also just put on a lip liner and put on a lip oil when i want something that is no must no fuss and i want my lips to look hydrated 
I have the Lady Gaga House Labs in the shade Secondary. This is the orange one. This is the only one I have, and I got it in this shade because it's different from anything else that I have, but I love the formula of this. It's thick enough that I feel like it stays on my lips and doesn't disappear too easy, but also gives you a little hint of color, which I love when I want no makeup makeup kind of look. So love the shade of this one. And then I finally picked up one of the Dior glosses. This is the Dior Lip Glow Oil in the shade 001 Pink. Again, same thing. Stays on, glossy. It's an oil, so it's great for your lips to hydrate, but also looks really good if you just wanna put on a lip liner and something super glossy. These get so much hype and I finally decided to try it this year and I see why. One of my loves. Last two products are brow products. One of them, this is very standard on par for how I do my brows, but I love this one because, let me just show you. This is the Uoma Fro To Go Eyeshadow Pencil. I love this because it is that thicker triangle tip. This is what I love to do my brows with. I don't like the little pointy ones. I just lightly kind of brush like strokes here in the front to make that look good. But then this one also has your spoolie on the end. And then in the middle, there is a powder. So for the front of my brows, if I feel like they're starting to look too crazy and they're a little too thick, I will take this powder and just kind of diffuse it in the front. And I don't even know if you can tell the difference that that made, <laughs> but I do. I love that this is a versatile combo product. And then the last one, this is a rediscovered love. This is in my travel bag. This is the KVD. Um, I think this is actually Kat Von D versus KVD, but I think they still have these brow products. This is the Super Brow, 24 hour Super Brow in dark brown. I started using this again because the brow pencil I had in my bag wore out and I didn't realize it and I was traveling and I refused to go buy another eyebrow pencil when I have probably 30 here at my house. So I started using this and I was like, man, this is good. Gotta be careful with a pomade, any pomade you use because it can get dark and sharpie brow real quick, but I've had this forever and it has not dried out which I was very surprised about. I love this to make a sharp line on the tail. When I dip in it, I just wipe off the excess in the cap and then I very lightly either stamp or just kind of draw brush-like brush strokes in my brows to make it look more natural. This is good, it stays on. I love wearing this to the gym because when I start sweating, my eyebrows are not gonna come off. Rediscovered love that I've had in my collection for a while now. We gotta talk about setting sprays because I have said I use this anytime I do my makeup. I have three. One of them, y'all already know, it has been a favorite forever. It's not going anywhere. My Urban Decay All Nighter locks your makeup on, helps everything settle so it's not powdery. And this also says that it helps to keep stuff from settling into lines. So that's another reason why I gravitate towards it. But it helps keep me matte, helps keep things from smudging and it doesn't dry down to like suck the life out of your face. So if you have dry skin, you can still use this and it's not gonna be too harsh. This has been upstairs on my vanity and I have been using it pretty much anytime I use my makeup, I am almost out. This is the Tarte Stay Spray Setting Spray. Another really good one that does not dry down too matte and suck the life out of your face, but it helps everything to stay and it's not overly drying, no alcohol, doesn't burn, not super scented, just a really good setting spray overall. This last one though, ooh wee. Alcohol, strong smell, like hairspray for your face, your makeup is not going anywhere. Patrick Star, I said it earlier, one size is for you never want your makeup to come off. You gotta do three steps to clean it off, but so, so good if you wanna make sure your makeup isn't going anywhere all day long. I also have to include nails in this video because y'all know I have been trying, hauling, introducing you to different brands of nails. And so we had to have some of my favorites. One of my favorite brands of press on nails to use is from Vanity Table. I always say it wrong, 
but it's vanity table and it is their finger suit press on nails I have so many boxes of these because when I find that I get a coupon for 10 or 15 percent off I stock up they have sales so I grab stuff out of the sales but this is two of the ones that I absolutely love and I'm showing two not because these are my only favorites but because I just want to show you the two shapes there's a square and then there's this kind of coffin but I just love these I feel like they're so easy to put on. They give you these little prep pads. These can last a week on me, if not more. And that's even with my workouts. I cut these most of the time because they're not super long, but with what I do in the gym, sometimes they get in the way. But I just feel like, I don't know what it is about it that makes the stickiness on these last. These are press on, so you don't have to glue them. Super easy to use. They have so many different shades and patterns and colors. So this is one of my favorite brands. If you don't want to order something online and you want something you can pick up easy, the Kiss Press-On Manicures, the Impress, I have so many boxes of these. And Ulta has a sale on these a lot, so always check the sale items. I have the Couture Collection. These are a little more glam, glitzy. You can see they have the rhinestones, they have the glitter ombre, the accent nails. But this is a nude pair that I have. I also that have some that are a lot more colorful because I like to switch up my nails. So these I find, these are less expensive, but they still also have an accent. This is a square pair in one of my favorite shades. And I love that these come in a short option. And then these also come in, an, in a coffin medium. So if you like white nails, I love that these have the little blue accents, but yeah these also last a pretty good long length on me so that's always what it's about for me because being in the gym it's hard to do my nails sometimes i need to pop them off literally i've been at the gym and struggling with my equipment and i will pop my nails off in a minute before i have a bad session so i don't want to spend a lot of money on nails and then i also this year got introduced to dip nails which i thought was going to be really hard and just a long process but i have my kit here that i got from double dip and i did a whole video on this kit on this set how to use it this was so easy to use you literally do your prep work you put on the activator you dip your nails in the powder and then you smooth it out and you put on the top coat and you're done. I love these because you don't have to do like the whole gel and sit with the UV lamp and all that stuff. But this also helps your nails because it's a like it gets hard. So it's almost it almost kind of feels like the acrylic powder, but it's not. It is not that crucial. I love this because my nails are short. They are very weak, so I can put this on top and it helps to harden my nails and it also lasts a lot longer than nail polish does. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. These are my 2023 favorites. I feel like it is a lot, but I tried to switch up my makeup a lot this year and really focus on using stuff that I have, revisiting older products because not everything needs to be new all the time. So that is it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you didn't skip around because you missed the surprise. Not going to tell you where it is. You got to watch the whole video. Thank you for sticking with me to the end and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.